Um, so uh, welcome everyone. I think people will be filtering in as we go. Um, so we're excited to spend this time with you all to do some knowledge sharing about two popular community supported agriculture platforms, which are CSAWARE and Farmigo. Um, and so the plan for today, we're gonna go over some learning objectives and then I will share a little bit about CAF and the Small Farm Tech Hub. Then we'll do presenter introductions and participant introductions. And then I'm gonna hand it off to Grace at Mountain Bounty Farm to talk about CSAWARE and show the back end. Um, she'll do that for about 30 minutes. And then we'll hand it over to Jason at Live Earth Farm and he will show the back end of Farmigo. That will be another 30 minutes roughly. And then at the end, we'll have time for a Q&A. And then um, the learning objectives for today. So basic overview, um, we want you to learn about the basic features of CSAWARE and Farmigo, understands pros and cons of each CSA platform, learn about why the farms chose these specific platforms, hear more about pricing of each platform and learn about CAF's new tech hub and existing resources. Um, and, and we also encourage you to drop questions in the chat or raise your hand in Zoom if you have any questions along the way as uh, the presentations for Farmigo and CSAWARE are going on. Um, and yeah, that's pretty much it. We want it to be interactive as possible. Um, and then about CAF, so uh, be, our mission is to build sustainable food and farming systems through policy advocacy and on the ground programs that create more resilient family farms, communities, and ecosystems. We are sharing a link to subscribe to our mailing list in the chat, including our Tech Hub newsletter. Um, we'll also share a link to sign up for the CAF farm, director, farm directory. Um, so the directory has over 1,000 visitors a month, and it's a great way to make your business more visible and searchable. It allows users to search based on types of crops, location, farming practices, and guides potential customers to your site of choice. Adding your farm to the directory is completely free and only takes a few minutes. All that is required is registering with the CAF website and filling out your information. And I'm going to drop that in really quick. Um, and so about us, so CAF has multiple programs and pathways for supporting family farmers. Please always feel free to reach out for us for support in any of these areas. So this session today is brought to you by our Farmer Services Program, which provides support on food safety, farm technology, and fire resilience. Um, since I don't think I even introduced myself, I'm Alicia Badorf. I'm one of the three Tech Hub contractors at CAF. Um, and our role at the Tech Hub is to identify web-based solutions that will make purchasing local food more convenient, accessible, and competitive. This means we can support you directly on your web-based needs, such as setting up a one-on-one -on -one meeting to go over e-commerce options. Um, feel free to share your questions, concerns, and areas of interest with us during today's workshop. You can visit our landing page on the CAF website for more resources. Um, and I think that we just wanted to share a couple of pictures. Uh, we've been working with a lot of farms this year um, and had some great success stories. Um, so with all this information that we've gathered about tech for farms. We've helped California-based farmers with strategies for social media, choosing e-commerce platforms, getting set up on Google My Business and finding the best payroll software for their business and many other areas of interest. Um, so yeah, like I said, drop us a line in the chat if you'd like to receive any free support from us. Um, so with that said, let's move into the meaty part of the webinar. Um, I'm going to introduce the presenters and then we'll have a chance to introduce um, some of the participants if anybody wants to share where they're from, 
uh, whether it's farm or a farmer support organization. Um, so starting with Grace um, from Mountain Bounty Farm, Grace was born and raised in Ohio and takes a lot of pride in her Midwestern roots. After receiving an environmental engineering degree from Ohio State University, she worked for the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service in Columbus, Ohio. After a couple years, she switched career paths to take an apprenticeship opportunity at a small CSA in Taos, New Mexico, and fell in love with farming. Since then, she's worked at Mountain Bounty Farm in Nevada City, California for the, the past four years. She manages the CSA, including sales, marketing, social media, and also manages the wholesale produce sales and farmers markets. Um, so Jason from Live Earth Farm, um, he was born and raised in San Francisco, and he's worked for a number of years in retail grocery, and then he worked in various positions for both hardware and software firms in Silicon Valley before discovering community-supported agriculture and joining Live Earth Farm in mid-2011. Since then, he has been coordinating the farm CSA program using Farmigo software to manage subscription logistics. Um, so again, uh, we'll be keeping our eyes on the chat and feel free to ask any questions during the presentations. Um, before we move on, I do want to ask for some participant introductions. So I don't know how many people are in here right now. It looks like we have, um, I don't know, why don't we say like, five people, if you could introduce yourselves um, and just say your name, what organization or farm you're representing, what your role is, and what you're hoping to learn today. And feel free to unmute or raise your hand. Or you can drop it in the chat if you're feeling a little shy. I can go. <laughs> can anyone Thank hear you. me? Thank <laughs> you. Great. Uh, my name is Raina. I am uh, uh, based in Katati, California, and I just finished or closed up my time with Petaluma Bounty Farm, which is a nonprofit farm um, in Petaluma. And now I'm going to be joining my um, farm mentor in her current farm business model. And so a large portion of it is going to be focused on a uh on the csa and so she has tons of experience um i just have maybe about four years doing it from a nonprofit perspective so i'm looking to attend this to learn more for myself and to as we're upping our subscription program this coming year for 2022 so really looking at how to streamline logistics online platforms that whole thing that um we neither of us have embarked on as much before and so yeah looking forward to learning from everybody um yeah, that's it. Thanks for sharing. Uh, yeah, I think this is going to be a great opportunity. And if questions come up for you as we're going, please raise your hand, drop a question in the chat. I see Kim introduced themselves over the chat. Nice to meet you, Kim. Anybody else? I'll go next. Sorry. Um, my name is Tom Inners. Um, myself and a business partner, William Henpen, have um, just uh, taken over ownership of Live Oak Farm here in Petaluma, California. Um, the past year, we have been um, starting a new farm uh, by the name of Umble Roots out in Solano County. Um, and so both myself and my partner, William, come from food and wine backgrounds. Um, so our sort of niche is um, servicing uh, restaurants, first and foremost, and sort of um, chef-driven culinary projects. Um, and so um, while we're here sort of in our transition, um, we are looking to sort of bolster up our CSA program and just kind of see what kind of um, resources are out there. Um, we've done some research on some of these softwares in the past and have kind of found a threshold at which, you know, certain membership makes sense for doing something like this, as opposed to just running spreadsheets and um, just kind of being organized in our own side of things. So I'm excited to see what tools are out there and at what sort of capacity does it make sense? Does it not make sense for a small farm like us? Thank you for your hosting. Thanks for sharing. 
Um, I see a couple more popped up in the chat here. Shine Ranch, Carlos Gomez, nice to meet you. Thanks for being here. Anybody else want to share? Hi, uh, I can go. Great. Uh, yeah, my name is Vanessa. Uh, I'm currently based in the Bay Area um, in Oakland. Um, I'm looking to start a small urban farm soon and uh, looking to do a CSA program as part of that. So yeah, seeing this presentation coming in today, I actually just got the link and I was so excited to see what types of options there could be. Um, and just like the person before me saying, you know, um, what makes sense depending on how big, you know, your CSA program is and just what that would look like as you scale up. Thank you, Vanessa. Thanks for being here. Anybody else? Otherwise, I'll get started. <coughs> okay, cool. Um, in that case, I'm going to hand it over to Grace from Mountain Bounty Farm. Um, and thank you, Grace. Take it away. Thank you. Hi, everyone. I am here with Mountain Bounty Farm in Nevada City, California. And I'm really excited to talk about CSA Wear. We uh, transitioned to CSA Wear in February of 2020. Um, we were using Member Assembler um, before that and did some research and ended up with CSA Wear. And um, so far, I really enjoy using it and I'm happy to talk about it since it feels like all I do. <laughs> Yeah, I just have a few slides about introduction to our farm and then I can share my screen so you can see more of what happens um, with the software. But Mountain Bounty Farm itself is a vegetable farm, um, primarily vegetables, 18 acres in cultivation. And we're primarily a CSA farm. That is our bread and butter. We do a little bit of wholesale and farmer's market, but um, the vegetable and our other CSA offerings are really our main um, markets. And we have 15 staff in summer, eight in the winter. Um, then we have two delivery drivers who do our two delivery days and a part-time bookkeeper. Um, yeah, so we, again, offer quite a few CSA shares. The backbone of all of our shares is the vegetable share, since Mountain Bounty itself is a vegetable farm. Um, that the vegetable share we offer year round, 50 weeks of the year. And Mountain Bounty is providing 100% of the vegetables eight months of the year. And then in the winter, we partner with other farms and distribute it all under our name and same kind of model, but um, acting more like a food hub in the winter. And we have two subscription options for those vegetable shares. We used to be a summer season CSA and a winter season CSA. And we've switched to the year round model as of early 2020. So at any time you can sign up for six months, regardless of season. And that's just like an, a relic of the CSA model and those people pay up front. But then we've also introduced this um, pay every four delivery subscription model, um, just because that's kind of like more easy, easier on the customer. It's really flexible, you know, easier billing, that kind of thing. Um, so then we also offer two seasonal fruit shares. Those have the same subscription options. You can pay up front for all the whole season, or you can pay every four deliveries. A, a farm partner distributes those for us. Um, then we have multiple flower shares. And we've trialed both bread and mushroom CSA shares before. Um, yeah, so just membership wise, again, the vegetables is really our baseline since Mountain Bounty is a vegetable farm. We used to have an issue with this having a summer CSA and a winter CSA where we would start the summer with 300 members. We slowly grow up to 700 members. And then start of the winter season, we drop back down because we wouldn't get everyone to renew, which really prompted us to pursue this year round model. And so with 
we both the pandemic and us switching to this year on model happened at the same time. Um, so since pandemic, we've had consistent membership of 800 to 1000 year round members. We just we have two distributions to our local Nevada City Grass Valley area and then to the Tahoe Truckee Reno area. And so we have a, kind of a split um, membership and that's about 300 local and 500 in Tahoe Truckee in Reno. And then we also have a significant fruit share um, membership, both in the summer and the winter. And again, a the fruit team we partner with is distributing those for us. The flowers, the bread, and the mushrooms are all distributed by us. Um, and then our CSA shares, we um, do not offer any customization. It's curated by farmers. It's what you get is what you get, very standard model. Um, and customization is an option in CSA wear, and I can show you kind of what that looks like, but we, it's not something we're currently utilizing. Um, and then we deliver the shares weekly. We are trialing bi-weekly for a few members who are asking for it um, and kind of seeing what that looks like. So right now that's not an option on our website, but it's something that admin is able to do for people. So if people are telling me that it's too much produce, and they want to quit, I can offer, it's a tool to kind of say, hey, do you want to go bi-weekly instead of ending your share? Um, and then we accept credit cards, that's required for the automatic billing subscriptions, paper checks, e-checks, and then we're hoping to add PayPal soon. Um, and this is, the delivery holds has been absolutely huge for us. It's something we're, the capability, was added when we switched to CSA wear and um, yeah, the member management side has been really great. The members can just place themselves on hold. They can kind of manipulate their schedule to be whenever they're in town or whenever they want to box. Um, and that's all done through their member dashboard, which is um, really useful. Uh, we deliver to both local and Tahoe Truckee Reno sites. We do not offer home delivery. It's um, with the mountain region. It's just two people live too far away to kind of offer that. And we asked our members in a survey last year and 90% said no, they didn't want home deliveries because it was going to be adding um, a surcharge. But it is something you can set up in CSA where. Um, and then we also occasionally add one one time add ons like vegetables, flowers, or if we have extra tomatoes, like flats of tomatoes or something. Um, okay, and then pricing, I included just the stuff in quotes is straight from our terms um, because I didn't want to misrepresent anything. Um, but the bold is the main point. We you pay for CSA where on produce out the door. So um, each month, the amount of the value of the amount of shares that you delivered is they take your commission from that. So it's 1.2% from $1 to $100,000 out the door. And then it drops to a commission rate of sales over $100,000, or sorry, not sales, produce out the door over $100,000. So we, it, they, they advertise that it's 1.5% and we, a, a few months after joining them, negotiated to this 1.2%. Um, I'm not exactly sure how I ne negotiated that, but I did and I'm very happy. <laughs> um, this for us is about $20,000 a year that we pay for CSA wear. Um, which is significant, but we also have a pretty large CSA. Um, so I'm just trying to be transparent in what that costs. Um, and then we also use authorized.net. They're like um, credit card merchant. They have a 3% credit card fee that's included in our prices. And then there's a transaction fee for um, those pay every four billing. Um, I actually don't know what the fee is exactly, but it's very small. Um, yeah, and then just some things that we really like and our, you know, shortcomings, benefits, it's, I think, once you get used to it, it's very easy to use. 
And for us, a big part of it was what it looks like on the member side. And it's very easy for the members to use as well. Um, for the most part, I would say, older ladies using iPads have sometimes more of a challenging time, but um, it's e very simple on the member side. There's tons of options on how you want your CSA to be set up. Um, their customer service team is so incredibly responsive. I'll be freaking out about something, email them, and she is the one person I work with is always responsive, which I really appreciate. Um, their tech team is seems good and solves any major issues. Um, I think it's a good price for what we're getting out of it, especially what the members get out of it. And um, that that to be said, we were comparing when we decided to switch for, to this, we were using member assembler, which was like a few thousand dollars a year to Harvey, which was um, saying their rate was 7% commission. So this 1.51% seems like a fair middle ground for what we're getting out of it. And they're constantly updating the software, which is really great. They just redid the user interface on the admin side and they're building new tons of new features um, and they're not asking for a price increase. So I think that those are all really great things about it. Shortcomings, we really wanted something that was like ours that we owned. And so we looked into having a hiring a software developer, having our own software, and it ultimately is not worth the major price tag with that. But you know, it doesn't integrate directly into our website. Like if we were using Squarespace or something like that, it would be more of our kind of product. Um, there's some issues with broadcasting emails, which are pretty frustrating, um, minor technical issues. I would say, while it's both a benefit and a shortcoming, there's so many options available. Um, it's, yeah, kind of, I would say, start simple and build from there. Um, and then there's kind of a, a bit of a learning curve kind of working with it. And if there's not, I can show you guys the back end side. Let's see, share my screen. Okay, can you guys see my screen? Mm, not yet. Not okay, yet, yeah. Oh, great. Let's see. There you go. Okay, great. Okay, so this is the public site. Um, and all of CSA where sites look the same, that's kind of one of the shortcomings I'd say is that they're not very customizable. And this is something they built for us. We deliver to these two different locations and we charge more for Tahoe Truckee Reno. And while you can incorporate a delivery fee, we wanted it to be less obvious. So immediately you decide your pickup location so essentially we have two different stores, but from there you can um, purchase shares. So um, we have these two subscription options where you can pay for the rep. This winter fruit share is ongoing or is underway. You can pay for the remainder of it upfront, or you can pay for this four deliveries that automatically renews. And the only delivery frequency option is weekly and you're already, kind of forked into this side of the website that is for Tahoe Truckee. And then, yeah, we're really just a CSA farm. So we're only selling these CSA subscriptions. We have one-time add-ons. Right now, our only option is um, these vegetable shares, but we can put, if we're offering, we could put fruit, flowers, bread, um, mushrooms, that kind of thing in there. So that's what it looks like to the um, member and then here we can talk about the admin side which is over here okay so this is the main admin side um lots of information i don't really spend a lot of time here i do you can search for members up here in the corner or most of the time i'm going here to search for csa members 
Um, the, if I'm searching for like a specific group of people, there's these filters you can add from the left-hand side. Um, so most of the time I'm looking for people who have paid for six months and their subscription's about to expire and I need to tell them that it's time to renew. So I'll go to a page that's not loading right now. <laughs> that says all the CSA members for the vegetable shares in Western Nevada County. And then I can sort by what I'm looking for. Um, so it's easy to um, navigate the CSA members in that way. Um, and they just added a feature that I wanted to show people, which is that you can text your CSA members. You can, so we have um, a lot of automatic emails set up, including a day of delivery email or text reminder. But now we just added this feature where you can individually text each CSA member. Um, and so, yeah, when, when you're looking this at this member data, you can um, download any kind of subgroup category if you're trying to manipulate that in Excel or whatnot. Um, you can also look at people who have opted out of promotional messages or send your weekly newsletters from here or look at people who just have login accounts. This doesn't um, integrate with MailChimp, which so occasionally, you know, every few months I like download everybody who has a login account and upload that to MailChimp. Um, but from here I can send broadcast emails. This is how we send our, our weekly newsletters. Um, and it's also very easy to target a certain group of people that you want to email. You can, there's many different filters. You can go active next week, which day of delivery, weekly or biweekly, what shares they have, where they pick up. Um, the other people on their subscription. So very easy to communicate with your members and manage your membership. Um, and then the delivery lists are here from this um, pack the truck page. So- hey Grace, yeah. sorry to interrupt you. Um, we just had a question that popped in the chat um, and it might be a little bit off right now, but um, so the question is, what is the approximate percentage breakdown of your CSA membership based on preferred payment option, credit card versus check, et cetera? And is this resource handy for all payment types and tracking paid, unpaid? Yeah, so we have, um, I'd say 20 or 30% of our membership pays by paper check. That's in prior to moving to CSA where we sent paper signup forms to our members and most people sent in checks. So we are moving away from that, but that is still a big base is yeah, 30% pays by check. Everyone else pays by credit card. Um, and of those who pay by credit card, 60 or 70% are on the automatic renew plan. Um, yeah, so that's gaining popularity. That's, that means they're the paying every four weeks via credit card. What was the other part of that chat, that question? Um, what is it? it was, I'm not sure what it's, is this resource handy for all payment types and tracking paid and unpaid? So like maybe is this platform, like does it show tracking of who's paid? Yeah, so it shows you can sort people by their balance due, which is a helpful way to look at what, what they have due. You can sort people by um, balance due over here or people who have indicated that they're mailing a check and you haven't gotten it yet, you can get that group of people to show up. There's also an automatic email that's sent out to people who you've, they've indicated that they're mailing a check and haven't you haven't received it yet. 
So I think it's like two weeks after they've signed up and you've, you haven't cleared their balance, then they automatically send a check or a send an email that says you have a balance due. So I send probably a monthly email from these people who have a balance due, um, you know, reminding them to pay their balance. We also accept people, a, a handful of payment plans for people who need it. So um, that's why everyone's not paid in full right now. Can I ask to um, Jason, if you would be available to answer that question for um, Live Earth Farm about like the approximate distribution of uh, those different types of payments sure. for your CSA? Yeah. yeah. Uh, our, our payment system is a little bit differently. All of the majority of our payments are ongoing recurring payments that members sign up for. And um, I would say 99% of them are electronic broken down between e-check, uh, the credit debit card, and then PayPal. Um, some members can pay up to $2,000 at a time. There's very, very few who do that. The majority of our members have the recurring payments of either $100 or $150. And so those payments process based on um, their balances and when their balance goes below zero. So they'll have like $150 credit. And if they spend that over three weeks, then another payment of $150 will process. Um, we were doing all checks uh, prior to going to Farmigo. It was uh, a nightmare. <laughs> we had pre-written checks for installments that if uh, you know we deposited six months later and they bounced, we had to follow up with everybody. So having, having all electronic payments is, uh, relieves us all of a headache, really. And it's a convenience for um, the majority of our members who most of them have just switched to, to doing it that way rather than uh, paying by check. Thank you, Jason. Um, and then Grace, I'll put you on the spot again, but there's another question. <laughs> so it's, uh, what is the approximate percentage breakdown of your membership based on the six month payment option versus the four week blocks? Yeah, so it's 60-40 um, on 60% is still paying every 25 deliveries and 40% are paying every four weeks. And these numbers are for mostly the vegetable share, that, though it's also an option for the fruit share. But yeah, what we're mostly keeping track is the vegetables. So more people, Everyone we uploaded into this software was paying in 25 week increments. And so either they've switched to pay every four billing or a lot of, since we introduced that as an option, most of the new subscriptions that come in are the pay every four billing. The people who are used to 25 weeks continue paying in 25 weeks most of the time. Um, so yeah, about that 60, 40. It's, uh, we, when we set it up, we didn't think, we thought the people who paid every four deliveries would be unreliable and um, we're charging them more to be on that plan. And ultimately they're, they're not unreliable. They just like the convenient billing. There's people who have people, I think people stay a lot longer when it's just automatically renewed. Thanks, Grace. And then um, one other question that came up, and maybe you and Jason can both answer this. Um, so for since there's people that are on a fixed budget or receiving economic assistance, does this system um, have a capability to work with EBT? So yes, you can put people, designate them as EBT members, but it's not taking payments via EBT. You still have to we do those be, via paper voucher and calling in because we don't have EB, we only have one reader and like 25 pickup sites. Um, so you can put people on EBT, they can sign up indicating that they're gonna pay with EBT. But if, since the way it works with our farm is that we don't have a reader at every site, um, they there's some, they have to contact us or really we contact them and say, okay, here's how EBT works with the vegetable shares. We really only have a handful of people on that plan. We do offer financial assistance. Um, about 40 or 50 families are on financial assistance. That's usually a 20% 
um, discount that's funded by both other community CSA members and the farm. And that is like a, a um, like a coupon code kind of thing. That's every time their subscription renews, <clears throat> excuse me, um, they're discounted that 20% 20, 20 financial aid. And Jason, how about Farmigo? Do they accept EBT payments? All uh, right. Well, very similar to what Grace was talking about is that uh, a processor is needed for the card, and that's not something our farm has. And Farmigo doesn't have an integrated way to bill an EBT card. And a lot of that has to do with um, how it's set up by the USDA and how those SNAP programs are used. And um, you know, it, it needs to be something that's changed kind of on that end that then allows a process like ours that delivers food uh, items to be able to use that program. Yeah, it would be help. It would be helpful if that would be a lot easier. <laughs> but yeah, we have one reader and it's just in our office and I run the payments offline twice a month, which I'm not exactly sure well, yeah, that's how you're supposed to do it. You can only accept payment two weeks in advance. Go ahead, Elizabeth. Well, Raina had her hand raised. I'm not sure if it was for this particular topic or for um, a future question, but Raina, feel free to chime in. Yeah, I, I just wanted to ask vocally, so I couldn't write it. It was confusing when I wrote it. Um, this is sort of a general question, I guess, for both two um, and about, uh, the CSA is is there a minimum amount of members that you would recommend that these either of these platforms would actually be worthwhile pursuing? You know, I'm personally we're looking at me at our lowest 150, and then and years growing, maybe we get up to 300. In your experience, do are either whether it be from a financial perspective of like okay, yeah, what we're paying into this is worth it, or from just like uh, maybe you don't need something as like built up or built out as CSA where or Farmigo. Do you either of you have perspective on scale and usefulness for different farms? Um, I would just comment that pre we used to do the like delivery lists and delivery holds via an Excel spreadsheet with five to 700 members and it is an absolute nightmare and this makes that way easier. <laughs> um, I would, it's hard to conceptualize. I, I would say 150 members might be a lot easier to just do in an Excel spreadsheet if you have the time. I also, honest, we used to pay someone full-time to be a CSA manager and now we pay the software and the part-time. So this just replaced a human being doing a lot of that um, work. But I, I don't, I'm not sure I have a good um, projection of what scale is worth it. I do like that this charges based on boxes out the door. So you're always paying that 1.5%, no matter your size. Um, but yeah. Um, I would kind of recommend in terms of considering a system as whether uh, you want something that may help you grow larger than what you were talking about, 150, 300 members, um, and how much time you want to spend on paperwork and, and spreadsheets on the computer. Uh, these programs, uh, they're designed to make that part of your uh, business a lot easier. And it is sometimes in consideration um, worth it to pay that little bit, uh, you know, cost per delivery then spend hours tearing your hair out because you made a mistake in a spreadsheet four pages down and having to find that item and correct it, or you make mistakes. And, and then in terms of convenience for uh, the people who are joining your CSA, um, I believe it helps uh, retain members simply because they find the whole process so much easier uh, to involve themselves in. We have a web store. We are, we're a customizable CSA, so people can go in and they can see the you know, picture of the item and add it or subtract it. And, and there's more involvement than uh, you might get simply by uh, using an Excel spreadsheet and telling members, okay, you know, you're going to get what I put on that. Um, so overall, if you're looking at how to manage turnover as well, it, it, these programs manage that first by member retention, by making it easier for them to stay 
Um, but then by allowing people to join um, more easily and more quickly um, as so that they are constantly bringing in and filling in those places of the people who are leaving. Um, again, if you're, you know, have a CSA program that you're not necessarily locked into for a season or something like that. Thank you. Um, and I, I also want to add uh, that, and Elizabeth made a point about this in the chat, that this is sort of part of the services that we're offering through the Small Farm Tech Hub, because a lot of these decisions are so based on your farm and your unique um, needs and um, the, the way that your marketing is set up. So um, yeah, like Reina, we're happy to have that conversation with you if you're looking for someone to like evaluate what works best for the farm. Um, and yeah, Elizabeth also made the point in the chat that um, there's some smaller CSAs that are using different programs that are maybe a little bit more cost effective. Um, but yeah, I'll leave it at that for now. Um, and there is another question. I might take this last question and then let Grace keep moving in the presentation. Um, but I think that also as we get deeper into their shares of the back end, you might be able to see like, okay, what's the functionality here? What are the benefits of having these software programs like CSA where and Farmigo? Um, so I, Grace, I'll just ask you this question and then we can, we can move on with your presentation. Yeah. Um, so do your, your CSA members see value in the software? So I guess more on the customer end, can they notice a user experience difference between you using this system versus your previous spreadsheet setup? Um, and they're just wondering how transparent it is for a CSA member. Yeah, they absolutely see a difference. I think the, the biggest thing is that they're now using it for this placing their share on hold. And so they're using it way more. That used to be something they had to call or email us about. Um, and I get comments maybe weekly about how much they like being able to use the, the manage their own subscriptions. Um, with that, there is plenty of confusion and questions that I'm still here to answer. Um, but I, I think they absolutely see, that. I think the value and the ease of vacation holds for, you know, that pays for this software in itself. <laughs> because like the week of Thanksgiving, we had 180 boxes on hold. And that I didn't have to, I talked to maybe five people and that is just a, a huge weight off my shoulder. Okay, okay should I keep going? Yeah, keep going, okay. thank you. Okay. Yeah, of course. Um, yeah, I'll just show a few more of the frequently used aspects for us. And this is the, the biggest thing for us was this del auto-populated delivery list. So again, we're splitting our delivery into two different days. And um, so here you can see this is the value of the shares out the door. So this is the number uh, and the number for the next day that CSA where is charging the commission on. And these are the prices of um, our shares on that pay every four plan. So these sign-in sheets for CSA shares are just auto-populated. They're very clean and easy to use. They're, you can change um, a few things about this. You can change like the font size. You can add a few more columns if you wanna check for a box return. And once this, it's, this is still editable for the admin, so it's populating this draft across the top, but once it's final, things like some, if someone's last delivery, it'll say last box or first box on there. It'll say unpaid if you've, um, like if you're, you're on automatic renew and your credit card fails and you haven't updated it yet. So there's a, it's a nice way to communicate with people a little bit. Um, there's also, you can print packing slips and labels. We don't use labels because all the shares are the same. We just have two different sizes, which are labeled, but, um, it's, it's easy to automatic 
automatically print labels, packing slips. Um, that's mostly what we're, we're getting from here. Oh, this is a nice summary of each site. This is what I'm giving to our delivery drivers. And this also includes add-ons, which you can see here. Um, so just a clean kind of summary for our drivers and for everybody. Um, so yeah, there's then the harvest list. We're, this is not a feature we've used yet, but um, in the summer when we're harvesting our produce, it's something we definitely should work on incorporating. I just set this up for this week so you could see it. Um, so this is showing the harvest totals for each um, crop that's in the box this week. This is also in this um, harvest list. This is how you set it up. You can go, you have all these items that you've inputted and you can check each item that you're putting in, the price, and whether it's, for us, it's whether it's in the small box or the regular box. And then it's um, telling me like the value of the box that we're distributing and the box that we, the value that we want. Um, so since we're not using customization, this is just um, for us to keep track of, you know, harvests and once this is published the members can see it on their dashboard what's going to be in their box we're sending a newsletter that has that information anyway so we we don't use this feature that much um but this is how you would also incorporate customization which again we're not using that but it's so it's not showing up here but um CSAware uses this thing, what's it called? a box bot, where your members can select their, their preferences for every item you have available. That's just a fixed selection. Then you as admin can go in the week of delivery, say all the items you have available, how, how much of each item you have, to be given to each boxes, what you want the price to be, whether how satisfied you want your customers to be. And then it will just auto fill all the boxes based on your members' preferences and what you have available. And then it automatically emails your members, tells them that their um, auto-populated box is available and then they can log in and edit that um, or buy more add-ons. Again, we don't use that feature, but it does exist. Um, the other thing is, um, oh, let's see, did I show that? This is what the harvest list looks like. So if you were using this feature for um, even just giving this to your harvest manager of what's gonna be in the box. So this is telling you how much to harvest. You can include, when you set up each item, you can include like that you want I don't know, a 10% buffer or something. So that would be included in this count versus harvest um, thing. So um, lots of options with that. Um, the other thing is delivery routes that you can set up home delivery with CSA where they use Optimo route integration. We don't offer home delivery. So we just have CSA sites. Um, and I think you can, you know, get, there's a lot more little features in here that you can utilize for home delivery or for multiple delivery days. Ours are already separated by delivery location and delivery day because we're having that price difference, but you could have them the same shares delivered over multiple days and include a delivery fee for certain areas if, if that's how you wanted to set it up. So we've just set it up um, um, for that Tahoe Truckee Reno area to pay a little bit more and it to be a little less obvious than a, paying a delivery fee. Hey Grace. Yeah. Can I ask you a question really quick? So you said that the um, thing is called Optima Route or something like that. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. Just wondering, so does that help you to like order your drop spot? So it's done in the most efficient way possible or what, what is the function of that? 
Um, so yeah, Optimo route, you can, so in our current iteration, we could use it for our, our drivers could tell members that their shares have been delivered and they would get a text. Or you can, if you're doing home delivery, it auto populates a Google Maps route for most efficient delivery. And then you can, again, tell your members when it's delivered and they get a text. So it's a seems like a very cool feature for home delivery and that they've done a lot of work with integrating that. I think they've done that in the last year, um, but we're not using it. So, um, but I, it seems really cool. It's again, like we, I said, we asked our customers if that was something they were interested in and they just weren't at this time. Um, okay, so the other, things I was going to show you. I think we talked a little bit about member payment options and CSA where billing. And I wanted to show you what the, the member side looks like. If there's not other questions about what it looks like on um, our side. Oh, I can show you what it, the CSA shares look like. Um, so here's a way I can find everyone who's in the winter fruit share, but it's also how I can edit the individual kind of share and set it up for how I want it to look. So this is, um, goes on forever. So it has no end date. The bill, automatic billing is for deliveries. And here's how you set up the prices of each share. And because we offer both the um, pay 25 deliveries and pay four deliveries, we have multiple little SKUs for those options. Um, so you can edit all of those, what the shares look like. There's tons of options in here. Like I said, you can make things, here's how you make it EBT only. I think there was a question about that um, or whether it's not available for EBT. You can keep track of stock, price, pay by credit card, reoccurring, you submit a deposit and then pay the rest later or, whatnot, there's a million billing options, um, which is helpful when you set it up. So it seems, I think CSAware is, they've designed a bunch of features for different farms and then they're all available for everyone. So kind of like navigating the path and the, fortunately the customer service person, Angel is really helpful in that in kind of um, finding the best fit for your farm if you, if, you don't have an idea of what that looks like or if you're moving over from a different platform. Um, okay, and then from the member side, here's the member dashboard. Um, so I, this is mine and I have a lot of subscriptions so it may look a little bit different, but um, you can see, this is where you would see what's coming in your box. If I had published that um, list of items in the box this week, it would show up here if you had a vegetable share. Um, you can edit your subscription. You can allow your members to have as much or as little um, power as they want. So ours can cha only change their delivery. Um, location, they can't change their delivery day or their frequency. They can't convert this share into a different share, but that is an option. So they can really just change their pickup, buy more credits for more deliveries or just cancel their share, um, which I think that's enough for them to do. Um, and they can see if you have a balance due, you get a big red button here to pay your balance um, with the credit card or e-check. You can see your past orders. Um, it's, yeah, I think it's very easy for them to navigate. Um, as far as placing your box on hold, which is the biggest thing I think our members are using this for is this is this week's delivery. And so it's past the member deadline to place their box on hold. So it's, you're not, you can't click this hold delivery. It's saying it's in process, it's too late, but for the week we come back from vacation, um, you can hold your box 
or get your box and then you get an automatic email when you do that and um it seems super easy they can also shop contact us um lots of things they, if if we had more add-ons i think this is it integrates e very easily to shop for add add-ons to your delivery but we don't do that very much um yeah i think that's all i have Great, thanks so much, Grace. Um, so we're gonna hand it over to Jason at Live Off Earth Farm. And then um, after he shows the back end of their Farmigo account, um, we will start open it up for a Q&A and come back to some of these questions in the chat. All yours, Jason. Okay, so this is the share screen button, right? Well, so the, the brief history of Live Earth Farm is that it was started by farmer Tom and his wife, Constance Rose, um, back in 1995, uh, located outside of Watsonville, California, which is just south of Santa Cruz. Um, Tom had gone to Eco Farm, if anybody is familiar with that, back in probably 94, and got the passion for organic farming and uh, you know, just that idea of being able to promote agriculture in a way that supports the community as well as the community supporting it. So they found a farm that was uh, available and started it and had a, a relatively small, um, I think I'm going to guess it was maybe about 10 acres at that time. Um, by 2009, uh, 2010, they started um, using Farmigo because they had grown to the point that they were uh, no longer able to manage those subscriptions with FileMicro Pro and just you know do everything by hand. Um, they had a CSA coordinator, but she was getting overwhelmed. Uh, in 2010, that's when community supported agriculture, that, that buzzword CSA really got started and growth began to happen for the next couple of years. And by 2011, you can see there were 900 shares that they were delivering. And they had locations all the way up in San Francisco and Oakland, um, small, but you know, still it was a foothold in the city up there. Um, 2012 started to kind of see a trend downward. Um, there was a lot of saturation in the market of CSA, and um, a lot of other programs were coming on trying to take advantage of the whole concept of delivering local uh, farm produce to people. And so by the end of 2013, uh, we, you know, we're down to about 650, having only started with 400. Uh, we kind of looked at the writing on the wall in terms of we had been a traditional CSA up until that time doing, I like what Grace said about um, we were curating the shares ourselves and, and selecting and, and uh, not allowing members to edit. Um, but after, you know, years of feedback of people saying you're putting too much kale in, you're putting too much celery and when are you going to stop? Uh, we realized it was time to, you know, go customizable and uh, be able to offer that as an option. And so we trialed it and we were doing 140 of what we called a choice share. Um, and we were still continuing to offer these two traditional share sizes. Uh, and we were um, charging a $5 handling fee at that time for the choice share to be able to, you know, do that customization of it. And by 2015, um, we were still kind of struggling. Uh, we were still below 500 numbers. Um, we had dropped a number of locations going from that 44 down to 34. Uh, and then uh, 2016, uh, we realized we needed to go year round. We had been taking um, like three to four weeks off over Christmas and New Year's and sometimes the whole month of March off because those are times of year when uh, you really can't grow anything. There's just too much rain and the, um, the fields are too muddy. But we, we were partnering with uh, a larger uh, local farm called Lakeside Organics. And then we also uh, found Coke Farm, which is a local um, warehouse right now. They're a, they're a farm and then they built a, a refrigerated warehouse. So we started to tap in to our local farm market and be able to offer uh, certain items to supplement what the farm itself was growing. And so by you know, 2020, we were back up to 800 uh, active members. We were still you know, uh, below 600 weekly shares, but we were you know, doing 550. We had a $25 minimum order. We had still dropped a few locations. We were down to 31. And at that time, about 30% of our members would place a hold per week 
and 75% of those members who were getting a share were making changes to content. Um, I don't think I've updated this to 2021, 20, uh, but uh, in March of uh, 2020, we saw our membership double. We went from you know, having those 800 active members to having 1,600 literally within uh, three days. It was, it was uh, put us all into a little bit of a state of shock. We had to shut down our CSA signups because uh, we were concerned about whether we would have enough food for everybody. Um, but we weathered it and we're now actively delivering uh, closer to a thousand shares per week. And our membership is still up there around 1600. Um, and, and we see, like I was talking about earlier, we see a constant turnover. There are those members who they participate for, you know, a month to three months and then they drop, but there's always somebody else coming in and signing up uh, to take their place. Um, in terms of uh, the member engagement that we use, Farmigo allows us to send uh, the weekly emails. You were noticing how Grace was kind of having her uh, way to select templates. We have something similar to that. Um, we remind them that our web store is open because they now, they all, everybody can now make changes uh, to share contents. And we see that as an opportunity, to, that, that email as an opportunity to say, hey, our web store is open. Aren't you hungry? Come buy something, you know, put some of that farm produce in your share that kind of thing. So it, it's a way to uh, engage with members rather than just kind of the, here's what you're gonna get. Um, it, it allows them to kind of play the role of going to the grocery store or the farmer's market, but they're doing it online. And a lot of people are now more familiar with that too, having done it uh, for the past year or so. Um, we do also do a weekend produce stand and you picking at the farm, um, May, mostly May through November. And that allows our members to come out and actually see the farm and you know go to pick a strawberry or a tomato or an apple and and really get that engagement with the fact that we're a local farm you know we're here this is where we grow the food uh which is where we're working and and we welcome that community and that engagement um and we've done that more uh through the social media of instagram and facebook because you know that's that's a way that our members engage with uh, everything. Uh, so we have a social media person. She runs around the farm to farmers markets to wherever she happens to see the farm out in our community and take a picture and, and posts it uh, for people to enjoy. So that that again, that engagement, we see that as an opportunity to say this is something more than just the produce in your box. You have this farm and this place that you're supporting. Um, in terms of uh, having a software service, it automates all of those admin functions that uh, we were talking about and that Grace was mentioning, the payments, uh, reports for harvesting and packing and delivery that I can take from the office and I can go down to the barn and hand to the crew. And it's in a format they understand and uh, can use. Um, the email feature, you know, those reminders, a lot of them are automated. There are alerts that go out uh, that are automated. So I don't have to remember them, um, which is very helpful. Um, because I'm, I'm not, you know, wanting to be on seven days a week necessarily. Uh, the fact that members have an account online, that's kind of also the feature of the engagement that the software program allows. They're able to go in and manage that subscription themselves. They can place holds. They can change their location. Uh, they can see a history of what their deliveries were, uh, looking back and see, you know, how that, uh, what they got like last week or two weeks ago, that kind of thing. Um, and the fact that it allows customizations of shares. I and mean, we, we couldn't have really probably survived that kind of transition where people were moving out of um, accepting a traditional share and really wanting to be able to customize. Uh, we wouldn't really be where we we're at today. If we hadn't survived, we still would probably be very small. Um, and the fact that they have the web store that they can look at uh, similar to what Grace was saying, you, you have to learn a software program and be able to help the members. Um, if you're not a software savvy person, you're probably going to want to find somebody who is so that they can help you with this. Um, although the support team at Farmigo and it sounds like at CSA where they're, they're very good, they will you know, handhold you through everything if you need to learn it. Um, the other issue is if you switch to the software, it's extremely difficult to go back to an old way of doing something. Your members are going to get used to this. They're going to like the convenience, um, and you are too. So there's that idea of you can't just unplug from a software program and say, okay, we're going back to doing it you know, in a card you know, catalog with uh, uh, little um, note cards or something like that. 
Um, there is the added expense. I didn't break it down the way Grace did, but it's essentially the same kind of thing. It's a small one to 2% uh, fee based on the delivery volume that Farmigo charges that. Um, and then it is, since it's based on delivery volume, you're not charged anything when you don't deliver. So those weeks when we were taking time off, we weren't paying anything uh, for using Farmigo. Um, but members could still go in, access their accounts, still make changes, do all sorts of those uh, activities that they would normally do. It wasn't like they were shut out of it. So Farmigo was still there and working. It's just we weren't paying for it. So that, that's sort of the brief history. Um, any questions out of that or anything else before I go into back end? Yeah, we so, should have time for questions after you show more so we can. Sure. Okay. So we're jumping into this. Okay. Well, so this is the dashboard that I land in um, when I'm using Farmigo. And first, though, I want to show you real quick um, what it looks like in terms of the joining process, because this will kind of give a, a jumping off place. So when, when members click the sign up for our CSA link, they reach a place where they can choose a pickup location. And uh, once they do that, it's given uh, a day for the delivery. Um, they then go in and they choose the, the one size share that we offer uh, right now. We, we streamlined it. It was getting a little bit too crazy with having multiple share sizes. So having uh, one share was a lot better. Um, we offer options where they can uh, get some extra fruit added to their uh, items. They can have a loaf of bread that's made by a local bake shop added. Um, we use uh, paper, uh, paper liners in our boxes, but some members find a plastic bag a lot more convenient so they can you know, switch to that and have that added to their box every week if they want instead of using the paper. Um, in terms of a payment, this is the kind of terms that I was talking about. Uh, members choose a payment plan, and we, of course, want to encourage them to, you know, sign up big. So we offer bonuses as a way to incentivize that uh, greater payment to uh, join. Um, and it, it kind of represents what used to be considered buying in for the season. Um, when we were a traditional CSA, members would pay up front sometimes $2,000 for their subscription. And then that would be their credit balance that they would work off of basically as we delivered shares. And so this is a similar thing to that. But then we had the members who they wanted to do the installments. So they would break that uh, seasonal payment up into a number of installments. And we saw that as, okay, well, you know, this is $150 recurring payment. So that we offer, you know, the whole range of uh, recurring payment amounts and somebody can choose one of those um, and i'm not going to continue on from here but you can you know create your account with facebook or with email um, once you finish and go to a pay step that's just getting the information of the credit card or the e-check um, or paypal and they're agreeing to the terms and conditions of paying that recurring payment um, when they finish, they get a little, you know, uh, screen that says, congratulations, you've joined and an automatic email is sent to them confirming that uh, their subscription. So in terms of um, where these things are set up, uh, we have our subscriptions, we have the producers of those subscriptions, we have our items, and we have our routes. The subscriptions that we were looking at are found under the publish. There's the CSA share. These are the options that we add. And people can sign up. The schedule is ongoing, um, but there is the option to add uh, biweekly schedules, uh, monthly schedules, things like that. It allows you to put a little place where you can put in the description. Um, we have a link where it goes to our website. People can get the frequently asked questions, and then a place where you put the image that they see. Uh, we are the producer of this share, Live Earth Farm, um, and we also have need to have um, a Spanish language because a lot of our crew is um, from Mexico and originally speak Spanish and read Spanish. So uh, Farmigo put this in and allows us to have that Spanish title. Um, 
going to uh, an option, it's essentially the same as a share. Uh, you can you know, put the status as published. Um, you can choose schedules for it. You can set maximums as to how many people can get against you know, choosing the producer. In this case, it's companion bake shop. You can limit the capacity and know how many have been sold versus available. Um, and again, putting in descriptions. Uh, in terms of how we manage our shares, we pre-select items that we know we have a lot of, and we will put those into the shares. And then there's a process by which we create the order, um, as it's called, in Farmigo. And that order is viewable within a cart that the member looks at within our web store. And so we have the option of putting in items that we've created and then selecting the number that we have in each share. It gives us a running total. Somebody who signed up for the fruit option, they get you know those items. And if we had a person who was getting a loaf of bread, we would have had companion bread down there. So. I could go in and I can say, oh, I forgot to add the bread to that particular box. So let me do that right now. And now anybody who had a bread share would be able to get that loaf of bread. What this also does is it has a harvest tab. And for each of these items, I could assign a source and a secondary source. Uh, so for instance, if we had uh, these apples and we wanted to say they came out of orchard number one, I could put in orchard number one here. If we got these carrots from Lakeside Organics, I could put Lakeside in here. And then this information within this uh, area here shows up in a different report, which um, is this, sourcing breakdown here. So this would be where that field one or orchard one um, or lakeside would show up. And it's showing that you know for Sunday through Sunday, we need to basically have all of this available um, for members for the boxes that we're gonna pack. Um, the other place that this shows up is in a packing list. So if we were, for instance, um, not offering a customizable share, this would be what would tell us this is what's going in. Uh, anybody who has a CSA share, anybody who has an extra fruit option would get these items. Anybody who has a plastic box would get bag as a box liner would get that. So we have uh, two ways to look at the information that is within this area here within the box builder. Um, in terms of once we're ready and we've decided on what we want, we can go to create orders and we can either create orders immediately or we can schedule orders for later um, and it will create them automatically for us. So there are times that I do that because our web store opens on Saturday and Sunday and uh, I would rather have the orders created for people when that happens versus you know, having me have to do it every Saturday and Sunday for them. Uh, the way that we get to the items as we go through the published items or uh, um, there's also just all items, published items are the ones that show up in our web store and they have an availability that we can assign. And as people order these items, they are deducted uh, from the amount that's there. So people ordered all the basil that we had available. Um, there's only one loaf of bread left here, that kind of thing. And as, as it reaches zero, it disappears from the web store. So the members will no longer see, oh, there's broccolini. Um, somebody would have to need, to, somebody would have to remove it from their cart in order for this to show back up again. But in terms of uh, the items, it allows us to, again, say whether it's a published um, item, we assign the price, uh, the unit type, 
whether it's ours in a, in a category that for our web store, we can choose this or uh, for instance, we have pantry items. So we have a for your pantry section. Uh, again, we can set max on the number of uh, items that a member can uh, order in case we don't want them to get six if we have a limited amount. Uh, we can put our name or somebody else's name here. Um, and again, there's the Spanish title that we use actually for our packing labels. Um, and this packing weight allows us to organize the item on our label. Uh, so that I'll get to that in a second here. Um, in terms of the web store, when members are shopping, this is what they're seeing. Um, and they have you know, the choice of all of the items that are produced by us. And then uh, the categories, for instance, other produce, um, these are the items that we're able to source from the other local uh, farms and be able to um, offer the members. We started carrying pantry items because we saw it as another way to engage with the members and create uh, items using our farm's produce, the excess, uh, you know, kind of get that value added product. And then also just have the chance for people to uh, get a non-produce, non-perishable item, um, something that will last them a little bit longer and uh, you know, give them that incentive to get a share that week versus just you know, not getting anything at all because, oh, I can't get the right items or something like that, or it's too many perishables. So it offered us the ability to also you know, work with, for instance, a coffee roaster locally. And um, again, Companion Bake Shop, we also have honey that we get from um, someone who brings hives to the farm. So it, it allows us to get into our network um, of people and, and suppliers and support them as well. Uh, in terms of an overall report, once I've, once members have placed their orders, we have what we call our sourcing breakdown report. And it would be similar to what's called the harvest list in CSA where, and we can get it in a pre-formatted PDF that allows us to just view it really quickly rather than um, it's, it's essentially this one, but it will show all of the, all of the items that have been ordered for the week, including um, ones that we were not putting into the boxes. So that's running. Hey, Jason. Yeah. Hi, um, if you could do like about five more minutes, I wanna make sure we have enough time for the Q&A at the end. Yeah, okay. Thanks so much. This is all really, really awesome, really helpful. So just quickly, that's the, the way that this list looks for essentially a week that we're gonna harvest. Um, in terms of managing member subscriptions, uh, there are ways to filter. I can select different types of subscription. Uh, we can find out, is somebody on temporary hold? Are they on permanent? Are they not on hold? Uh, we have site hosts, so they have subscriptions as well. If I wanted to just select all the hosts, I could choose that or all the members. Um, and it allows the ability to, uh, once a membership is called up, be able to email those people. Uh, I can export it into a file if I want to manipulate any of this into an Excel file. Uh, if I want to see you know, who is ordered uh, for our Wednesday delivery, I can go into the store orders and I can find those members and email them exclusively. This also allows me to sort by, for instance, anybody who um, got that broccolini, I can choose that item and I can find anybody for our Wednesday delivery who happens to have broccolini. And if, for instance, uh, basil this week, I was mentioning basil, we, uh, it got killed by the cold that we experienced. So we have a bunch of members who ordered basil and I'm gonna have to tell them, sorry, we don't have any basil. So this would be the way I would do it is by choosing um, 
the item that I want. And being able to email those members that, oh, you know, there's going to be a missing item or, you know, sorry, for instance, we also had no red potatoes once. So I can choose these pre-formatted uh, emails and then just make some quick edits and send it out to them. Uh, so it allows, and then in terms of uh, editing uh, those members, there's ways to mass update orders so that I don't have to go through and scroll individually and take items out of each of these members. Um, but this is what the inside of a member's account looks like, but if I need to manage it, I can see what are they subscribed to, when is their next delivery date, I can see their locations over here, um, they have a payment plan that they've signed up for, and this is what their upcoming order contains, and I can either edit the quantity or delete it if I want. Um, there's a history of their payments that they've made down here. So if there's any problems with the payment that's happening, uh, I have that at hand. There's also the history of their uh, deliveries. And so for instance, if Amy said, hey, I didn't get some item on December 8th, I could look and see, was that item first in her uh, box to begin with? And if it was, then I can credit her for it. So there's, there's handy information here. Um, in terms of how it looks, to the member when they're in their account, they're able to manage all of the different information, like they're able to themselves see, um, well, I'm not able to see it for you, but they could have checked and noticed, oh, there's an item in this web order that I didn't get. They're able to go into a tab and, and place hold periods if they want to. They're able to see the directions for their location. Um, if they want to change their pickup site, they can change during certain hours. Uh, we, we lock people out of making changes uh, beginning Monday morning so that we can do everything. But they could also change their subscription here. Um, they could change their delivery for one to location to one time if they were going to be somewhere else for a week. And they can manage their payments in terms of getting in and choosing a different payment amount or updating details, those kinds of things. Uh, all of this payment information is stored uh, offline in a third party. Um, so Farmigo doesn't actually have any of it. It's all handed off to somebody else that transacts it and, and keeps it secure. Uh, was that about five minutes? Am I, how am I doing? <laughs> Yeah, I, that was about five minutes. I think we should transition to questions. Um, and thank you so much, Jason. That was very, very helpful to see the visual of the back end. Sure. So um, I'm going to just roll into the Q&A. And I wanted to make a couple notes, um, just that this is just sort of like a very quick <laughs> grazing of the surface of these platforms. Um, and they can be used, there's so much functionality in them. I think both Grace and Jason pointed to this, but that you can use it differently depending on your farming operation. Um, I worked for a farm that also used Farmigo. So it's really interesting to see the way that Jason has been using it at Live Earth Farm um, because it is like different. Like we don't do custom CSAs um, at the farm that I used to work at. So our use of the reports and everything was a little bit different, but I think it's just a good point that um, it, you can use it to your farm's needs, basically, each of these platforms. Um, and then I also wanted to mention that there are some great resources on our website for the Tech Hub um, if you're looking for more answers and like guides to these questions. Um, and also, of course, like, please reach out to us if you have any specific questions and we're offering free technical assistance. Um, so I want to start addressing some of the questions that were put in the chat. And then um, I see there's some more coming through. So I'll address those too. Um, and then you can also raise your hand if you have a question and I will make sure to get to you. Um, okay, so the first one is how much time did it take for you to set up CSA where to be operable for your farm? Um, 
So yeah, I'll hand that over to Grace. Yeah, we um, had a two month trial period where I was running both um, CSA where and our little Excel pivot table at the same time. And that allowed me to kind of like, there were at least four weeks where I did the delivery list by hand and then also double checked, you know, what was auto populating from CSA where and so um, and then it was also like all the automatic emails were turned off so that, it, you know, I was learning how things worked and not blasting our CSA members. Um, I would say I'm happy I did that in the winter where I had some more time to work on it. I'm in a ballpark that it took me like probably 60 hours to get it set up. Well, that's really high. 40. <laughs> Sounds realistic to me. <laughs> yeah. And of course, CSA where was there handholding the entire time. So they're super helpful. Thank you. Um, and the next question is for both farms. Have you noticed a difference in the number of delinquent accounts since transitioning to web payments? Um, and this is with regards to moving from traditional payments that cover a year or six months to smaller, more frequently occurring charges. Um, I can just touch on this. Yeah, I, we see a lot more credit cards being declined and it's um, really unclear of like, whether that's insufficient funds or just like the credit card world we live in where payments get declined. Um, so that is an extra burden of admin work. There's, I'd say an average of 10 orders of the several hundred that are going through every Friday that get declined. And you can set it up whether you wanna stop their share immediately and not send it if they don't pay for it, or we, unfortunately are very forgiving and send shares anyway when they're not paid for and they just get a debit on their account. So I can keep track, I can still keep track of them that they owe us money, that it doesn't disappear that way. And it shows up on the delivery list that they are unpaid and they get, you know, multiple emails that say pay us money. Um, but they do, they can't, there are more of them with this, um, uh, automatic billing situation. And Jason, what has your experience been with that? Uh, well, so I didn't make the transition myself from um, the checks to Farmigo, but there are definitely you know, accounts that uh, the payments fail on. And it's often, I find either because of an expiration date or uh, there was the you know the card was reported as stolen and they, the person didn't update their information um, in our recurring payment system. Uh, but most will uh, receive an automated email and that will prompt them to update details. And you know, usually that's done within three payment cycles. Uh, the payments keep trying to process every day until something's done about it. Um, so you know, within that period of you know, one to three weeks or three rather three days, the payment processing, people will generally get it uh, updated. And then I have my threshold, similar to what Grace was saying, is we don't like to just outright cut people off. So we do tend to have a negative balance run week to week sometimes um, before another email or a phone call reaches that person. So there is a little bit of that management. Uh, I think it's easier to do than uh, if it, we were using paper checks because it's it's a much different process. The bank has to return the check. And this happens with e-checks. There's a delay in that whole uh, payment return process that can kind of throw a monkey wrench into following up with the person right away and saying, oh, your payment failed, please resolve this and have it happen sooner rather than later. So my sense is that electronic payments are get resolved. If there's an issue, it's resolved sooner than if there's an issue with a check. Great, thanks to both of you. Um, and then here's another question that either of you could answer, I think, but um, do you use uh, the same software to manage your suppliers? Um, I guess your suppliers supply of produce, the produce from other farmers. Um, and this kind of ties in to a question I thought might be helpful. Um, 
because I think both of you uh, I like bring in produce or products from other farms. Um, so is there, are there any like reporting functions that are helpful for tracking for like your organic certification or for food safety within these programs that makes that a little bit easier? So this is kind of a two-part question and Frank, please let me know if I phrase your question correctly. Oh, uh, well, am I still on screen share? It looks like maybe I am. Can you, or should I, can you see what I'm yep. working on? Okay. Well, in terms of that box builder part that I was talking about, um, where there's the harvest list where you can uh, assign a source, uh, that's one way to do food safety and uh, organic certification tracking because they wanna know where did you get this from? Um, and then you're able to tie it to the shares that you're delivering, the boxes. Uh, in terms of um, the first part of the question, uh, reporting for producers, other farms, Farmigo has that in terms of the, the sourcing breakdown. Again, it would be something similar to where you're assigning a source for an item and then you run a report. Uh, I don't know which one to show you exactly right now, but you can select the producers. I think it's the distribution report. Um, where, or you can choose a category of producer, um, that kind of thing that allows you to isolate out, oh, you know, these are all the items I'm getting from that other source, whether it was for us, it would be Coke Farm or, or Lakeside. We have uh, a, a person who handles all of the wholesale ordering and he, he does it using his own process. I, I think most of it's through, you know, notes on his phone personally. Um, but he takes information that I give him and puts it into his process and, and then orders the produce based on that, um, the number that I give him that is generated by the software. Yeah, similarly, we have a wholesale in the winter when we're buying in produce, we have a wholesale manager who keeps track of that. And because of the way CSAware is set up, you'd have to um, set the supplier for beets to be some other farm. And since Mountain Bounty Farm is the supplier 10 months of the year, we're sticking with that. And it's still under our CSA name. So we keep track of the stuff for our organic certification separate than CSA were. Okay, yeah, we're gonna wrap it up there to be respectful to our presenters um, and Jason and Grace, thank you so much for sharing all of that information. Thanks to everyone for participating. Um, I just wanted to end by, again, sharing information for one-on-one um, -on -one support sessions with CAF's Small Farm Tech Hub. Um, we are supplied, providing support for online presence, e-commerce, social media, POS systems, and so on. Um, we're here to help you with decision-making and strategics and to be your business therapist. Um, so thanks coming by today. Um, if you have any questions, please feel free to email us and reach out and we hope to hear from you soon. And I was hoping we could cover the last question. Sorry, I was for Jason, <laughs> if you guys don't mind staying on just another minute, because um, this was a good question. Oh, I think you had to jump. Oh, <laughs> never mind. sorry. We'll try to get that I, question for you. Yeah. Sorry. I might be able to answer that from my CSA managing experience. And Grace, if, if Grace has time, she might be able to also. Um, so yeah, this is definitely a customer service question, which I think um, I always tried to provide as much information as I could from the farming perspective. And sometimes people would be upset about it, but I think just handling it with like just being patient. <laughs> um, but most of the time, I think that customers understand and they're un like taking on the risk of the farmer from signing up for the CSA. Um, we'll see if Grace has anything to say. Yeah, I think the customers would like to, would rather get a good product than a damaged product. So especially if you're very specifically about this basil, like we don't want to give a damaged product to the Customer. So just explaining that and replacing it with something else is 
totally fine. And in, in our the way our CSA works is we just put like a disclaimer in our newsletter that says, you know, we're aiming to give you these items, but you know, farming is <laughs> has lots of hurdles, and we may you may get something else. <laughs> Thanks, Grace. Yeah, I appreciate Thank that. <laughs> Thank you for the extra time. Thank you, Alicia. Well done. Thank, yeah, you. Thank you. Thanks, Elizabeth. <laughs> All right. Night, everyone. Bye.